And we're just minutes away. Four-star running back Chris Tyree will announce his commitment live at 24-7 Sports on HQ. Tyree Hale is from Chester, Virginia. Expected to choose between Notre Dame, Oklahoma, and Alabama. Now, he is ranked as the 29th overall prospect and the number one all-purpose back in the class of 2020. And as you take a look at Chris Tyree, the four stars there, all the things in the crystal ball as well. Right now, all signs point to Notre Dame, but you just never know. Without further ado, let's turn things over to the guys at 24-7 Sports in Nashville, Tennessee, Kevin Boylard and Barton Simmons. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Tommy. And as you heard, it's decision day for Chris Tyree. I'm Kevin Boylard. With me is Barton Simmons, director of scouting here at 24-7 Sports. We're coming to you live from the 24-7 Sports studio in Nashville, Tennessee. We will be bringing you Tyree's decision live from Chester, Virginia in a few minutes. So stay tuned. First, we're going to break him down as a prospect. Barton, you ready for this one? Let's do it. All yeah. right, cool. So just a little information on Chris Tyree. He is the all-purpose back, the number one ranked all-purpose back in the 24-7 Sports composite for the class of 2020. And he's the number 29 overall recruit in the 24-7 Sports composite. He's five foot nine 178 pounds Barton when you watch this guy what stands out most to you speed dude it's all about speed I mean when you talk about Chris Tyree we're not just talking about a guy that's fast uh, fast by high school standards fast by college standards he's fast by any standard anywhere in the world I mean you put him on a field that dude can run um, he's a 4 3 8 40 kind of guy He's tested in the 4-3 range now in consecutive camp seasons on a laser, a legitimate time. And so that, that's the kind of big play ability you're getting. He, he's great in space. He's great in the open field. Uh, he can touch the football and go all the way. He's a home run hitter every time he touches it. So I, I think when you are talking about what are you getting, that's exactly what you're getting. You're getting big plays. You're getting the ability to take it the distance every time you give him the ball, if you're giving it to him in the right situation. Yeah, and you mentioned that sub 4 4 40 time verified at the opening. Uh, he also had a 38.2 inch vertical yeah. jump, so just an all around explosive athlete. You see the 10.6 second 100 meter dash as well. Where do you think Tyree is most dangerous? Because he played all over the field. Do you think it's running the ball as a receiver, as a returner? What do you think? I think it will evolve over the course of his career. I think early in his career, you might see those touches come in the return game, whether that's punt returns or kick returns. Um, perhaps he gets those touches on third downs, uh, getting the ball out of the backfield, jet sweeps. He can really do everything in terms of, of different ways you can get him the football offensively and allow him to go make plays. Uh, so, but I, I do think that as his career evolves, as he gets stronger, as he gets bigger, he, we might see him become that kind of every down back, more of a true running back. But I think right now, Certainly heading into what would be a freshman season in 2020, uh, it's more of the type of situation where you just find him some touches. You carve out some touches for him in your offense or in special teams because, again, look, if, if he has home run ability, then a, a couple touches a game could be enough to get a big explosive play that could be the difference. So he might not be ready for that every down workload early in his career, but he's got every opportunity to grow into that as he matures physically and certainly even in limited touches, he can make a difference. Yeah, and you mentioned the speed is the number one thing that pops out, and he packs a big game into a small frame. At five foot nine, 178 pounds, there's going to be some concerns. Do you think that Tyree has the toughness to take the hits that are going to come at the next level? Yeah, well, look, I, I think he has certainly the mental toughness. Uh, does he have the physical strength, the maturity? Uh, again, I think that comes. I think that that's something we see evolve and, and, and he grows into, uh, but he plays both sides of the football. I mean, you'd see him at there lining up at cornerback, showing some competitive nature out there. You see him tackling guys in space. You see him showing a physicality on that end of the, uh, of the field. And just you like to see a guy that competes. I think as much as anything, competitive temperament heading into the college game is, is as important as anything. And, and so because of that, I, I think he has the mentality to be able to take those hits. And I think the physicality to take those hits will come. A lot of people at folks at home might be scratching their head a little bit at the all-purpose back designation as opposed to running back or 
Tyree does a little bit of everything. Right. You could really list them as multiple things. But uh, and the recent history of the all-purpose back doesn't really paint a full picture. If you look at the last five number one all-purpose backs in the 24-7 sports composite, you've got Taj Griffin and Tavian Feaster, a couple guys that recently entered the transfer portal, uh, Kaylin LeBourne, who's dealt with an injury, Ricky Slade, who's got one season under his belt at Penn State, and then Wandell Robinson, who's joining Nebraska this year. So what are you actually getting in a top-ranked all-purpose back as opposed to a top-ranked running back? Well, I think that's what's unique about the position is it can be any number of different things. I mean, Wandale Robinson is truly a slot receiver if he wants to be. Ricky Slade is really a more multi-purpose back, and I think that's what Chris Tyree can be. I mean, look, Kavian Feaster was a big physical running back, but also had over a thousand yards receiving in high school in one year. So uh, you get a lot of different things. Sometimes it's just small. And that's a little bit what Chris Tyree is, a guy that's got all kinds of ability, but he's just a little bit undersized. And so he's labeled an all-purpose back right now, but that could mean any number of things when he gets to the next level. And it sort of depends on how whatever team he chooses decides to use him. Barton, we showed Tyree's crystal ball earlier, uh, leaning heavily for Notre Dame, but he's picking between three schools, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, and Alabama. All three of these schools were in last year's college football playoff. What do you think that says about Tyree as a competitor? Yeah, I think it says a lot, not only about Tyree as a prospect, because, look, he's, he's wanted by the teams that are able to get really anybody they want in the country, but he also says a lot about him as a competitor, as you mentioned, because, look, he's about to step into some of the deepest, most talented rosters in the country, and, and I think he's prepared for that. All three great schools. Let's get his decision now. We're going to Chester, Virginia, where Steve Wiltfong, our director of recruiting at 24-7 Sports, is with Chris Tyree for his decision. There's a buzz here inside the gym at Thomas Dale High School as Chris Tyree, perhaps the fastest prospect in the country, his 4-3 speed in the 40-yard dash is set to make his college decision. Alabama, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, what was it about these three programs, Chris? Um, well, Alabama is just it's kind of like an NFL factory with how many running backs they put in the NFL. Um, with Oklahoma, I feel like I could be very successful in their offense, especially with my skill set. And then Notre Dame was kind of like, I'm a number one priority there. I mean, it's really good academics. So that's what stood out to them. Well, congrats on everything. Before you tell people where you're going to school, I know Coach wanted to say a couple things about you. First of all, thank everybody for coming today. This is a, uh, a proud day in Thomasville history. Chris has worked extremely hard over the last three and a half years um, since he first started playing for us to, to get into this position. Um, he's done it in the classroom, he's done it on the field, he's led by example. Uh, you know, you couldn't ask for a better football player. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Chris and his family. Uh, first off, I would, just, I would just like to thank God for blessing me with amazing abilities and putting me in this position that I'm in today. It wouldn't be possible without him. Um, next, I want to thank my family and all my close friends for supporting me throughout my life. I mean, y'all have sacrificed a lot of time and interest and money just to help me be the best person that I can be. I really appreciate y'all for that. Um, next, I want to thank my coaches and my teachers just for supporting me throughout this process. I mean, it's been a long time coming, but y'all have shown nothing but love, and I really appreciate it. Um, lastly, I want to thank every school that believed in me and gave me an opportunity to be a part of the program with their family. Um, as I look back on these last four years, I mean, I've seen travel many, many, to many different places, uh, met, met new people, and most importantly, I've made great relationships with those people. Um, I'm truly blessed to say that I've earned 32 Division I scholarship offers for football from schools across the country, but at the end of the day, I can only, I can only pick one. So. Um, with that being said, I, would, I am honored and blessed to say that I will be continuing my academic and athletic career at the University of Notre Dame. <laughs>
With 24-7 Sports number one all-purpose back, Chris Tyree in the fold. Notre Dame now has the number six ranked recruiting class in the country. Chris, your new running backs coach, Lance Taylor, Coach Bryce Love. He coached Christian McCaffrey at Stanford. How much of an impact did that have on your decision to play for Coach Taylor? I mean, it's a really great impact saying that they have really similar skill sets as me. So just seeing that they were so successful and with them being coached by Coach Taylor, I mean, it's, it's eye-opening. I'm excited to, to, to be a part of the program. Chris, you said you've known you were going to Notre Dame for the last two weeks. What was it about this Irish program that made you want to be part of it? Um, just one, it's really prestigious academically. So, like, we thought about it and thought about just, like, if football wasn't in the picture, what, what school would be the best fit for me? So I feel like just to get, get a degree from a prestigious school like Notre Dame is, is, is really important. Kevin Barton, or Kevin Barton, back to you guys in Nashville. Thanks, Steve. So Tyree is headed to South Bend. He's going to be a member of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And if you look back at past history, this is a little unusual for Notre Dame because uh, Tyree is the first all-purpose back to commit to Notre Dame since Kivari Russell, who ended up playing cornerback for them. Uh, and I, there's going to be some allusions, I think, to Theo Riddick in 2009, but that was a long time ago, 10 years. So a lot of bigger backs recently, uh, most recently with Dexter Williams. Uh, how do you think he fits in at Notre Dame? I tell you, I, I tried to find a Notre Dame comp for Chris Tyree, and I think Theo Riddick is, is probably the best bet. But I don't even, I mean, Theo Riddick was a 4 6 8 guy at the NFL Combine. Chris Tyree is a 4 3 8 guy coming out of high school. Uh, I think if there is a true Chris Tyree cop at Notre Dame, it's well beyond my area of expertise. It, it is deep in the Notre Dame annals. And I think that this is a kid that brings a new element to this offense, which is what's exciting about it from Notre Dame's perspective, is you get a kid, even if he isn't that every down back right out of the packaging, he is still someone that brings a dynamic, big play element, explosive with the football, that we haven't necessarily seen a style of play we haven't necessarily seen out of the Notre Dame backfield. Um, and so I think it'll be fun to see how they fold him in over the course of the next couple of years in that offense. Well, speaking of bringing a new dynamic to the offense, we showed those old running backs for Notre Dame and how they're all pushing six foot, 215 pounds at least. But there is a new coach yeah. in the running backs room for Notre Dame in Lance Taylor, who uh, Tyree mentioned in his interview with Steve Wilfong. Uh, He's from Stanford, Coach Christian McCaffrey, Coach Bryce Love. Yeah. Can Tyree be that type of player for Notre Dame? I, I think the Bryce Love comparison is, is a really interesting one because Bryce Love, when he came out of North Carolina, committed to Stanford, he was one of the fastest players in the country, but he was also undersized, and he was also really a, considered an all-purpose back. And, and early in his Stanford career, that's what he was. He was a complimentary a uh, big play threat that was uh, had a lot of long speed when he got the ball in his hands. But as we saw Bryce Love's career evolve, he got stronger, he got thicker, he became an every down back to the point where he became a workhorse at Stanford. And you, you met Bryce Love in the hole late in his career, you knew it, and, and, and he packed a punch. And so I think that's sort of the trajectory that Chris Tyree's career could potentially have. And I think uh, to, to see Lance Taylor take an interest in Bryce Love or, or, or in Tyree and see some of Bryce Love in him, I think is, is really exciting for folks at Notre Dame. Uh, I know that that was exciting for Chris Tyree as he sat down and watched old Stanford clips with Lance Taylor. Um, that, that's a, that played heavily in this decision. Well, do you think the way Coach Taylor used those Stanford backs uh, and developed them over the years, uh, looking forward now to Tyree, do you believe that he could be a year one contributor for the Fighting Irish? And if so, where do you see him making the largest impact? Yeah, I, I do think that Chris Tyree can be a year one contributor, but, but I think it's because of the different ways he can contribute. You know, does that mean he comes in and is a third down uh, back? Does that mean that he is a, a slot type of guy that they work on the jet sweep action? Does that mean that he's someone that's a punt returner or a kick returner in the special teams game? I just think there's a lot of ways that his skill set with that kind of speed can be factored into the Notre Dame offense or special teams. And so uh, Chris Tyree's ability, his upside, it's all really exciting. And I think we see a taste of it early on. And I think we see it grow over the course of his career. Tyree, I think it's also important to mention uh, in his 
interview earlier this week with Steve Wiltfong mentioned the academics at Notre Dame as a big reason why he was going there or, or why he was considering there and ultimately chose Notre Dame. Uh, you know, a guy who his family really pushed him to take honors in AP courses. So I think that that factors in there as well. Let's move on to the recruiting impact, though, and uh, see what Chris Tyree's addition to this 2020 class does, because Notre Dame was ranked in the top 10 before today, and uh, now he's their 11th commit in 2020, their eighth four-star. How, how far does Notre Dame move up in the rankings now? They're up to number five in the rankings. And what's really interesting, look, obviously they're coming off of a college football playoff appearance. The last time Notre Dame had a top five class was 2013. Obviously, that's coming off that national championship game performance uh, against Alabama. And so uh, what's going to be really interesting to see is, is how this class compares to that class in 2013. When 2013, we saw, hey, Will Fuller, who was an unheralded guy that ended up being a first-round type of talent. We saw Jalen Smith, a first-round kind of talent that we thought coming out that became a first-round type of talent in the NFL as well. But there are also some misses. Max Redfield was a highly ranked guy that, did, that didn't pan out. So I think it's going to be really important for Notre Dame this cycle to, to, to dive into some of these big battles, Chris Tyree being one of them, get their wins coming off that, that kind of a season they had last year and really play with the big dogs nationally in recruiting the way they can, flex their muscles in that regard, but not stray too far away from the evaluation side of it and, and, and not get sucked into the chase for stars because really Notre Dame still has to be great evaluators, get the right guys on campus, and, and that's, that balance is going to be what powers this class because you have to capitalize on the kind of momentum that last season provides you. And, and I think this to this point, it's a heck of a start. I, I really like the class Notre Dame's putting together. You mentioned that 2013 class, which finished fifth. Right now, Notre Dame is fifth. Do you see that as the ceiling for this Notre Dame class, or do you think they really can continue to capitalize on this college football playoff momentum and maybe, you know, make a push for the number one spot? Well, I, I, ultimately, that's about what everyone else is doing, too. I mean, Clemson is putting together a, a historic class. You know Alabama and Nick Saban are always going to be right there around the top. Uh, Georgia's recruiting at a really high level. So I, I do think that are they going to be able to sneak up to 3-2-1? That might be a little much to ask for, but if Notre Dame can just hover around this top five range, I really think that's a win for that program in, in this 2020 recruiting cycle. And, and it feels like things are really heading in the right direction, sort of trending up, particularly as this staff has turned over and some of the recruiters they've, that they've accumulated on that staff. Um, you know, Lance Taylor clearly showing what he can do. Brian Poley and another guy that's had a lot of success on that staff. Um, this is a, a staff that I, I think is flexing its muscles right now and, and looks as though it can compete with anybody in the country. Yeah, Notre Dame definitely does want to continue that momentum, I'm sure. Looking at a little bit at the class, they've got some four-star talent there at the skill positions. How do you feel about it looking at the quarterback position? They've got Drew Pine, wide receiver Jordan Johnson, and then a couple of four-star tight ends in Michael Mayer and Kevin Bauman. What do you think? Yeah, look, I think all those guys are, I mean, particularly the tight end position, Michael Mayer, that's the best tight end in the country. Um, Jordan Johnson, as we learn more about him, a big-bodied receiver, similar to the mold of Equinemia St. Brown, Chase Claypool, Miles Boykin, some of the guys that have had success there at Notre Dame. He's that kind of guy. So you love to see that tradition continued. Obviously, we talked about the new dynamic. Chris Tyree brings to the table. And then Drew Pine is another great example of just a really productive, really sound quarterback. Back. So uh, at the skill spots, and I think that's an area, look, they've had success lately in the front seven defensively. They've had phenomenal offensive lines. I think Notre Dame has to continue to be really explosive and dynamic at the skill positions, and it looks as though this is going to continue to be, again, an upward trajectory, an upward trending program in that regard. Do you think that Chris Tyree might help them on the recruiting trail the rest of the way? Uh, well, look, I think anytime, particularly when you're getting into a region like the DMV, where a lot of those guys are packed in together. They kind of know each other. They played against each other. If there's some familiarity, that always helps you. And, and Chris Tyree is, is absolutely a, a national name. Um, he's a guy that's going to be at the national events, repping that Notre Dame hat and rocking those Notre Dame gloves or what have you. You know, that matters, uh, maybe just a little bit, but it does matter. It's momentum. Momentum in recruiting is real, and certainly he gives Notre Dame a, a really healthy jolt and, and boost in that regard. All right, we'll see where that 2020 Notre Dame recruiting class heads from here. Uh, Chris Tyree is heading to South Bend. Uh, for Barton Simmons and Steve Wilfong, I'm Kevin Boylard. Back to Tommy at HQ.
Gentlemen, thank you very much. And as we take a look at the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, <sighs> look at that ranking. Up to six, Chris Tyree making it known that the all-purpose back is headed to join Brian Kelly and the Fighting Irish. More HQ coming up. Another great day. A live announcement right here at CBS Sports HQ. It's what we do.